Hi guys, welcome back to this series where we're building out our portfolio website using CSS Grid as well as SAS to build this whole thing out. So what we're going to be doing in this video, now that we've set up our basic styles, and there's a couple of mistakes that I realized I made or things that I forgot, um, but in the main focus of this video is going to be these two parts here. So a couple of interesting things we're doing, this part here is really simple, really basic. Down here we will be using the grid to do this, but we're also going to have a flexbox fallback for it. The flexbox fallback doesn't look as nice as what this is going to look like, especially on larger screens but that's okay. The other thing we're going to be doing is having uh, using object fit. But the, I just want to show you guys object fit because it's really cool and I definitely want to use it on this site. So let's get started. So uh, here in my partials, I'm just going to create one new file for this. So let's just come in here and do a new file. I've also made the font size a little bit bigger. Let me know in the comments if the font size is okay. Um, no one said anything, but I found it was a little small in my last videos. So um, I always have to remember for my videos to make the font a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna call this one underscore welcome.scss. Oh, you know what, we're gonna have two. So let's do underscore welcome.scss, whoops. And let's do this one down here too. It just makes more sense and is a little bit better. So this one's gonna be underscore intro.scss because that's sort of the intro text. It's the first stuff. I couldn't call it making it happen, but you know, maybe that's gonna change. So welcome, introduction, and then, you know, whoop, undo. Uh, we won't get down into this. This will be the next video, but then we would eventually get into our portfolio down there. So the first thing I have to do is go into my all and do and import, and this will be, first is my welcome. So import welcome and import intro. And I'll save that file. I'll close this down. I'll save that. And I'm gonna do, I'm using um, VS Code if you didn't watch the other one. So I'm just gonna do a control or if you're on a Mac command, back tick. If you're not sure where the back tick is, it's the one that's right above tab. Uh, you can use it for the tilde too. So uh, now I just write gulp in here. That should launch that. And of course it opened up in the wrong tab. Here we go. Close that one. Okay, and we don't need this. So a couple of things. I'm actually gonna go back into my modules and my typography. No, sorry. Let's go into my base file. Okay, so let's go to my welcome file here. Um, and I'm also, let's go over here. I'm just gonna split that out and bring up my welcome. And uh, let's just go quickly look at the markup I wrote here. So I have a welcome. Oh, that's, I called that hero and that welcome. Huh, why would I call this the welcome? I'm gonna change this to intro because um, I don't like what I named it before. And, and my hero, We'll switch over to welcome. Save. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just move you. Let's just do that. No. Yeah, let's just do that, but move you down. And let's just move this up like that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, base I don't need anymore. We're on our welcome. Let me make sure that's saved so I have the right class names and everything. Um, so the first thing, let's just do dot welcome. The first thing I'm gonna do is my background image, URL, and to be honest, I don't remember what I called it. I probably called it hero image. Let's go look fast, fast, fast. Header BG, I'm guessing it's that one. Images slash header BG dot PNG. Save, there we go, good. I'm also gonna do a height of like 80 viewport height. Because I want it to be pretty big, depending on the device, um, but I don't want it to be the whole screen because I definitely want this to sort of people to be able to see at least the top of that. Or do I? We'll go with 100 for now and we'll see if we want to change that after. And we'll do a display flex on here, display flex. And I'm just gonna jump back over really fast. Um, I have the side scrolling thing that's really bugging me right now. This is one of the things I forgot. So in my base file, I'm just gonna come in here and add image max width 100% for now and close that. Okay. So um, yeah, I think I'm maybe 100% would look better. We'll see. It depends on the device, maybe. Okay, so let's just see how this is gonna look. 
So welcome, that is good. Um, now, what I could do, and what I used to do in the past, is always give this its own class name. Because this one is different from everything else. It's different from all my other H1s, right? The thing is, and this, yeah, I don't like how I set up my H1 span. I'm going to change that a little bit. But um, as I was saying, I, I, I used to always add a class to this. The thing is, this style is pretty specific to the, here. It's really specific to the style I'm doing on this. So for me, the way I'm seeing this in Vision is it's not really a title that I'd want to pull out and use somewhere else. So because of that, I'm actually just going to nest it. Um, and if you're not using SAS, and just to make sure, we can do, you can just do welcome h1 on its own line and write in the same styles. Um, with SAS, you can nest. I, I try to avoid nesting as much as possible, and I used to 100% avoid it. But I'm starting to come around to the idea, unless you're working on a massive project. If it's a huge project that you know should be super, com it should just be tons of components because you want to be able to use things all over the place. You don't know exactly how things are going to be used. Then I completely agree. You want to make sure everything has its own class name. On something like this, I'm not sure I see the utility of it as much. And I actually think that this is a little bit easier to maintain. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but my view on it is sort of shifting a little bit. I went from one extreme to the other extreme, and now I think I'm finding a little bit of a middle ground, where like 90% of the time I want to use a class name on everything, but there are t exceptions and rule things that I, I, I break it with a little bit. So what we're going to do on my H1 here, we have our font size. So it's off screen for you guys right now, but the, the font size on this is 25, which is like a really awkward thing. So I'm just going to do 1.5 rem and see what that looks like. And my font weight, font weight looks like it's going to be a font weight, font weight normal. That looks better. The color of it is dark blue. Awesome. That looks pretty good. Yes. Awesome. That looks pretty much like what I want. Um, we could add a little bit of line height to this, I guess. Line height of like 1.5. Okay, and it needs to be centered. So for this, I'm just that's why I have a display of flex on here. Then I can just do um, align items center, justify content center, hit save, and it should pop right in the middle. And I guess I should also do a text align center. Did I misspell text align? Yes. Semicolon expected. Ah, I forgot. There, haha. -ha. Okay, good. Now, one thing I, I said, I don't like where I put my span. Um, I think in this case, like this span is part of my welcome thing. It's not supposed to be used elsewhere. My letter spacing is also a little big on there, but it's not terrible. Uh, but I think I'll make that a little bit smaller. I'll live with it for now. It's a little bit big, but I'll live with it and see if I like it anymore later on. I'm also, my colors are a little bit off, but I know I used, I did a copy from here. So I almost feel like my colors from XD are lying to me a little bit. Um, actually, I forgot here. Background image. I'm all over the place here. Sorry, guys. Background size, cover. And I'll do a background position of center. Center. There we go. That looks a little better. And that just means as I scale up and down, it'll fit my screen. So we can do like a, we can see that the background is growing. There we see it a bit more this way. Um, so it's going to grow and fit my screen. And I think I do actually like this viewport 100%. We're going to have the little hamburger menu. I know I didn't write the markup for that yet. I'm just, once I come and add my navigation, uh, we're going to do that. And I think that will just be one big, big video that I'm going to do, including the JavaScript, the markup, everything for it in one video once the rest of the site is done. That's the current plan anyway. Back on track to what I was talking about is to go back into my base file here, steal this span. Save, close that, and pop that span in here. Save. Um, and again, this is just because I think this span belongs more to all of this. And I'm actually going to make my line height bigger. Cool. There we go. Um, so that looks nice. And yeah, this span sort of belongs with my welcome H1. And now I'm actually going three deep, which is something I almost never, ever, ever do. 
but it's sort of how I'm going now. What do you guys think about this? What do you? What's your opinions on um, just everything having a class name versus something like what I'm doing now, where I'm I'm nesting? I'd like to know your thoughts on that, and if yeah, I'd appreciate some feedback and what you think would be the best approach or how you work and all of that. Um, so the last thing I need here is my little bar on the top and the bottom. So on this, we're still going to be inside of here. Uh, so it, and again, if you're not following, this means I have my welcome h1. I have some rules. I'm going to have my welcome h1 span is going to have some rules. And now I'm going to do my welcome before and I'll have a welcome after as well. Um, I guess I could have just shown you the compiled CSS <laughs> instead of writing that out. But anyway, um, so here I'm going to do an ampersand or an and before. And that just means it's h1. If you're writing regular CSS, just write the welcome h1 before. So my h1 before is going to have a content of nothing, but we need to have, we need to tell it there's nothing in there. We need to give it a width. I don't know, let's say 80%. And actually, how am I going to position this? Let's just hit save. Uh, let's give it a height of one pixel. Oh, I know what we'll do. Height of one pixel and a background of dark blue. I don't see anything. Inspect. Let's pull this down so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, so I'm in my welcome. My h1 should have a before. It does width and a height. Oh, display block. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing, somebody asked me one time about using a, a position absolute. It's either display block or position absolute or both. Um, but you need at least one or the other. And in this case, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with just a display block on it. And actually, if I do this inline block, will it center it? Cool. Uh, with the block, it wasn't centered. I'd have to do margin autos on the side, which I didn't really want to do. It's too big, so I'm going to try. Uh, we're going to go back to block because <laughs> that's going to cause some issues. Display block, and we'll just do my margin zero auto, and that will center it right there. Cool. So that looks okay. Welcome to my portfolio. Now I just need that space here. So that's nice and easy because that just means it's not a margin zero auto. Top will be zero, auto left and right, and my margin bottom will be like 3M, 2M. There we go. And we can do pretty much actually before and after. Remove that. All of this is exactly the same. Right? So if I save that, I have my two lines. And then I would just have my and before we'll have this one. And my and after will have the same thing, but the other way around 2m, 2m, 0. Cool, right? So my before and my after are sharing all of these properties. They're all exactly the same. So it just makes it so I can write a little bit less code. I have the content, the display block, the width, the height, the background. So all of those are exactly the same for all of them. This one just has its own margin on the top. This one has its own margin on the bottom. Awesome. So I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. And that means that as, yeah, look at that. So a full page. This will, I will be building in some media queries and stuff. So uh, it won't look, you know, the fonts will get bigger on the bigger screen size because that looks <laughs> a little bit sad at the really big size, but I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So now we can move on down to the next part because, yeah, I'm happy with how that looks. I think it's a nice little, and again, if, unless you're on your phone, it's horizontal. It won't really look like that. Um, let's just go and do a little inspect, put the responsive mode on and hit a iPhone 6 for fun. <laughs> I can't see all my text, of course. Really? Why not? <laughs> I designed this to work on that size. Uh, okay, let's just go and fix that then. <laughs> Whoops. Typography. My default letter spacing. 
is going to be too big, so let's 0.2. Why is there a big space on the side there? And also, just for fun, let's drop down to the iPhone 5 then. That's annoying. And that actually looks more like the design that I was after, so I don't mind fixing the letter spacing for that. Um, the one thing that I'm a little bit confuzzled by, I'm actually going to add another thing in here of uh, font weight. Font weight of uh, font weight normal, just to make sure it doesn't ever load in the bold version, because it was loading in a bold one, I think, which I didn't want since we're in here. I was going to do that after, but got distracted. Okay, so why does it not look centered? Is it my letter spacing? That's actually, let's just put that to zero. Is the letter spacing being calculated on the right side there, and it's just weird with this font? Like, that's sort of annoying, but I don't know if I have a fix for that. If anyone has any suggestions or knows how to fix that, it's something I've never run into before. Huh, that's weird. Okay, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know, uh, and we can look at fixing that. So now we're going to jump down to the next part. So I'm going to save my typography. I don't need that anymore. I have my index open. I'm not sure if I need it. Um, let's close it for now. Actually, before I close it, we're going to the next one. It's just intro. I have an intro left, intro middle, and intro right. Awesome. Cool. So I can close this one, and I can go to my intro. So my intro is this part here. So I want to build this out with the grid, but the first thing I'm going to be doing for this one is uh, using Flexbox, and then we're going to add the grid functionality after. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a dot intro, and I'm just going to write display flex, and it should sort of work actually, <laughs> more or less. It's not quite what we're after, obviously. It's way too small and doesn't look so good, but at least we have three columns. Um, my intro, whoops, intro middle, is a background of dark blue. Let's bring up my design here because I don't remember exactly what it looks like. The color of this is perfect, I think. It's, uh, I used like an opacity on that, eh? Um, but it's not too bad. If I just do color white, will that I gave that a color, my H2s all have a color, don't they? Okay, so let's just, I'm putting the color on this, just assuming, you know, I did a right, left, and middle, assuming we could change things around or add text at one point, um, even though that would probably never happen. Color white, see this is, whatever, H2, color white. Isn't that an intro H2? is. So why'd the color not change? Oh. Aha. Okay, good. Um, making it happen. So that is okay. Now, what I'd mentioned about these images, um, and this is where I'm going to use something called um, the object fit, right? And so let's just, I'll just show you how the that works, actually. Dot intro left comma dot intro right. So I'm going to select both of those. Um, and so for on both of these, actually, it should be the image. Uh, IMG. Object fit cover. All right, so when I first do that, nothing happens. Um, but that's because the image is allowed to be smaller. So I'm also going to do min height of 100% and a min width of 100%. Ah, there we go. Um, and now it's actually just going to act like a background size of cover. So you can see that I see most of both of those images, but as this gets smaller, they just sort of hide away. Um, so that's really cool. And I really like that. So it's a, a super cool thing, um, this object fit cover thing. So that's actually working really, really well. Um, the only thing is this obviously looks like crap. So that's my intro middle. Let's give you some padding. Of 2m, 3m, let's do a text align center, um, and it's a little bit smushed, but this is where 
the flex box fallback will not be perfect. And again, most, you know, maybe I can do like a 3M for top and bottom, or if I do back to two, so we do 2.5 maybe. Um, and here the color actually won't be white. My color doesn't want to be white, it wants to be RGBA white and I don't remember what I did 0.7 cool good um, so this is if you don't know with SAS you can put in a variable name comma and then the color I think I did that in one of my other ones but it's a nice way to have transparent e text and that again is if I change this background color now the text will sort of go along with it um, yeah so this is just one of those places where it's not a perfect fallback and I'm not going to do anything more complicated maybe you're not super happy with how that looks because it gets like a little too smushed and at the really big screen sizes what you'll see is it's going to sort of, it doesn't look fantastic. And actually we can fix this though, right? That doesn't look nice. So we can do intro middle um, display flex. Is it? Yep. Um, but we're going to do a flex direction of column. Cool. And we're going to do um, align content Center, cross my fingers that, no, not align content, center, align items. No, uh, it's going to be justify content. Sorry, justify content. Center should work. Cross my fingers again. Yeah, there we go. So, um, cool. Um, and this is where this gets really kind of stretched out and doesn't look fantastic, yo. Um, one thing I guess we could do just for fun to see if this will work padding instead of being I'll do 2.5 M for top and bottom and left and right say I did like two viewport width let's just see that means as my screen gets smaller the padding will adjust and get smaller with it and as my screen gets bigger the padding will adjust and get bigger with it and nah, it's still kind of small though eh? <laughs> um, so I made that I just don't want to make it too big because it's a little bit better, I guess. It's never going to be perfect, and I'm not trying to make this perfect because this is more about the grid. And let's just see. Actually, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's not ideal, but um, for what I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm happy with how that is looking, actually, for Flexbox fallback. And the reason I'm doing my fallback first is because what I'm going to do now is in my intro here. I'm gonna do an at supports. So supports has actually been around a really long time. But nobody seems to know about it. I didn't know about it anyway. And what you can do in here is you can add support for stuff. So it's like a media query, but only if the browser supports it. Now, one thing with supports is Internet Explorer doesn't even know what supports means, but that's fine because it just means it skips over it and pretends it's not actually there. So that's kind of cool. Um, the one place you can run into trouble is if I put display grid in here, for example, and the browser does support the grid, but it's like the older version of the grid, a little bit like how Edge is doing things. Um, this could get it to sort of bug out. I would worry about it a little more, except in like less than a month, Edge is going to be supporting grid. Um, so I shouldn't have to stress about it too much. We are using Flexbox. Uh, do use an auto prefix here just to make sure you can support some of the Internet Explorer stuff. And this is obviously we're using grid, so we're looking at more modern technology. This won't work in IE8. <laughs> and if you want it to, well, it's not going to happen. Um, but so supports display grid. So what this means is now instead of having this is the, the original, but then I can in here say, that the intro will be a display of grid. And you can see it just completely changed my layout because now it's using the grid instead of using the flex. So display grid, and what I'm gonna do is grid template columns, and I'm gonna say 1FR. So 1FR is just like use whatever available space we have. Then I'm gonna do a min max because I want this thing to be able to grow and shrink, and then I'm gonna do a 1FR here at the end. Uh, so 1FR, 1FR, and then my min max in here. Remember the min max can't have like uh, FR units, but for now I'm gonna do auto and comma 30M. 30M comes out to roughly something like 480 to 500 pixels, I think. So if I save that, you can see that it's um, it's working, right? I have, yeah, oh, it's sort of working. 
That's yeah, even that's fine. If I don't even see those side images, does it really matter? Nope, it doesn't. <laughs> Um, and then as this gets bigger, it's going to try and always be 30M, but if my screen is smaller than 30M, you can see they actually start to disappear. And you know what? I'm actually going to do a min max on these two because I want to always see the min max of the minimum. Let's say it's like pretty small, uh, 30 pixels. Let's just say 2M comma one FR and we'll copy that over and put that one over here at the end. So I'm doing min max, min max, min max. Let's save that and see if it works. Save. So now those two little side things, that's kind of small. What if I made that four? I'd have to do it for both, obviously. Save. So those two things on the side can't get smaller than 4M. So as long as they're the screen and here 320 is the smallest you'll ever see. So around here is what it looks like. Um, so the one thing I like about the grid better than Flexbox is I can control the sizes of these a lot easier and I can give them separate minimum and maximum widths all with this without any media queries. And the lack of media queries is really big for me here because what's happening is it's getting my different sizes. So these are at their minimum. This one is set to auto, which just means make sure all the content fits. That's all. So as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, as long as all the content fits, it's fine. Um, and then once we start getting bigger, you can see those two side things, they're still staying at the minimum size until this gets to 30M. And once that hits the 30M threshold, now it doesn't get any bigger, but those two things on the side start to grow. And what's gonna happen as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger is it's just gonna start growing, everything staying centered, and you get this nice big thing and this doesn't the images start getting bigger and this just keeps its nice sort of focal thing right here in the middle which i actually think looks pretty nice and i like how that looks um, i have these little weird white lines on the bottom that's my images do i have here display block that's because they're inline items i'm assuming Let's just make that really big again to make sure that I'm right. Yeah, there we go. I got rid of it. That's like the, the inline block little buggy thing to make sure that it works uh, for everything. So there we go. I think that looks pretty awesome, guys. I'm really happy with how that's working overall. Maybe I can do a little bit more padding on the top um, or adjust my my maximum size. But I like my maximum size at the really big screen size. And I like that I don't have to use media queries on this. Uh, really, really nice that I can just do this. And again, this at supports is amazing. I love how this um, the at supports works and how easy it is to use. And you can use this for anything. You could even have like a, a float fallback if flex isn't supported, you know. But again, that's so-so because again, some browsers don't support at supports. If the browser doesn't know what at supports means though, it's just going to skip it over. So it's not like it's something that's going to really... Um, get in the way of anything. It's it's not going to cause any major issues. It can get ignored by older browsers, the only ones that can sometimes maybe cause an issue are ones that understands this but aren't using, you know, if they're they're not they haven't implemented things in the same way yet. One thing that is important with this is I didn't bring in the auto prefixer. So if you are using this, I would suggest and you wanted to push this into production, uh, I would definitely recommend that you auto that you prefix stuff, especially for Flexbox, because Microsoft likes, um, you know, if you actually want this to work in Internet Explorer with the Flexbox, it's going to need um, some some of that. So maybe we'll we'll add that to our gulp file later on, so we can test this out properly in all the browsers. Um, the only thing that's missing now is my little white line. I think um, I have this little little line right there, so we can add that in right now. That's my intro H2. So we'll just do my at, not at, and after on here. Uh, the width looked pretty small. Let's do like a 20% content was, and I said I don't do things in order. Uh, I do things as they come into my head, which is true, but I always have content at the top. I sort of have my own way of organizing these things. Uh, the height, height will be one pixel. The Background will be our RGBA white, I don't know, 0.5, and display will be block. 
and of course it's not showing up anywhere so let's go and see why it's not showing up h2 after is over there content display block ah not the first time i do that there we go um, okay, so then we need to do uh, margin 1m on the top, auto left and right, 0 on the bottom. Actually, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's fine that that breaks onto two lines. Cool, so I think that looks really nice. I haven't built my media query into this, but it's just because I want to go back and do that after because a lot of the media queries will all happen at the same time. I am just focusing at the small size, but I wanted to show you guys I didn't really need to build a media query for this to work. My only media queries that are gonna affect this area are gonna deal with the font sizes changing a little bit. Um, but this is why I love the grid. It's not a media query solution, but it is something that makes us not need as many media queries. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you have any comments, any questions, please leave them down below. Let me know your opinion about the whole nesting thing like I've been doing. Let me know if you like it, don't like it, if you have any opinions on it and anything like that. I'm very curious about how you guys do your own code because I don't get to see it. Well, you get to see all of the stuff that I'm writing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.